Hi there, welcome to another AOI tutorial. Today we're going to have a quick walkthrough of this Im image here. We're going to look at a couple of things we can do just to make it look a lot better. Now the first thing we notice when we look at this is it's looking a little bit washed out. So we're just going to bring those tones down a bit. Now my favourite tool to do that is curves. It just gives us a bit more control. So first off I'm going to grab this starting point here and drag it to where the bottom of this grey line meets that graph because that's the darkest regions in here and the starting point here is black. So I want to bring those dark regions down close to black. Now with the mid-tones I'm just going to pull them down as well. And I'm not going to play with any fancy S-curves or anything that's going to get a nice deepening of those tones. Something like that. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to bring out some of the red in this hair. So I'm just going to create a new layer. I'm going to use a selective color tool. And with those reds I'm just going to take away some of the cyan add some yellow and add some magenta just to really kind of bring that make that red kind of pop a bit more something like that now I'm just going to mask that out and with the brush tool paint it back in just where I want it just kind of around here actually that's a bit too much up there I think and take that out okay now the next thing I'm going to do is work on the greens in the background. Same sort of thing. I'm going to use the selective colour tool. Bring up the greens. And I'm going to take some of the magenta out of them. Add in a little bit of cyan, maybe some yellow. Right, sometimes you can hit the greens by the yellow channel as well. No, not so much this time. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now, same view as before, we mask that out, although in this instance there may not be too much of a need to mask out because we really just hit those greens, so that'll do. Now these blues up here are looking a little bit otherworldly, so I'm just going to tone them down a little bit. For that I'm going to use the Replace Colour Tool, and I'm going to use my positive eye brush, or my eye brush first, select just the blues. Now I'm going to select a different range of blues kind of like this. Now with those blues I'm going to drop the saturation down a bit and also bring the hue around to something a little bit more natural. Select a few more of these blues here and that's good. Just click OK. Now I'm just going to set my history point to before that replace colour. Use the history brush tool. Nice and soft, nice and big. Not that big and just do a nice soft fade out around this glow here because this glow here has got a little bit of blue here and I want to keep that blue in that glow ok so that's good now actually I might just history brush in I went perhaps a little bit too far just up here there we go good now next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a quick look at the background sometimes that replace colour yeah it can leave some, some funky artefacts when you don't grab all the colours correctly so just to make that a little bit more natural we are going to run a Gaussian blur over that just something that looks good, something that hides the, some of the jagged lines that that created, that's good of course now we're going to mask the girl back in making sure as to get her scrabbly hair too We want to get all these little scraggly and wispy bits because if we don't get them sometimes it, you can end up with a very obvious glow effect around the model and you can see that the background's been blurred. But sometimes like this we do go a little bit too far so we have to bring that in. And it depends on how important the picture is. You can play with these masks and get them more and more precise. For this edit here I'm not going to worry too much because I'm just this is just a demonstration edit so I'm just showing you guys the process but as you can see you can zoom right in. If you've got a Wacom tablet also editing these kind of masks is much much easier. So that's what we're looking at so far. The next thing I might just do is just add a little bit of life to these eyes. I'm just going to grab the dodge tool. There's some mid-tones, a bit more exposure. 
Oh, I'm still on the mask, that's a problem. Let's collapse that down. Now, back to the dodge tool on the eyes, bring them up a bit. Oh, can't hit that one. And also use the burn tool just on the shadows. And just make sure we've got some nice dark shadows around the eyes so we've got good contrast. And just bring a bit in with the lips too. So there we go, we're really highlighting that eye now. Okay, I'm just going to do one more quick curves adjustment to the entire picture. Bring down the shadows a little bit more. Maybe make this one just a little bit more of a vague shape. Let's have a look at the skin, how's that? On the whole, quite beautiful. I think we might just do a couple of little... Oops. A couple of little heels here. Smooth it out a little bit. I'm not sure what this funky bit of colour is up here. Or it might have been a, a weird reflection or something. And there we go. I often don't like to use too aggressive skin smoothing techniques because often you really don't need them. If you're working with a, a fairly young model, they've all, always got beautiful skin and really do we want skin to look like plastic? A lot of people do, and if that's your thing, fair enough, but I like my skin to look like skin. There we go. Now I'm going to save this finished picture here as a TIFF file. That way we keep it a uh, fully uncompressed save version of it, so if I ever want to come back and change anything on it, I can use this one here. We don't want to be playing around with JPEG files because every time you save a JPEG file, it recompresses it, so you lose more and more detail and data. Now that we've done that, I'm just going to quickly resize this down to 800 pixels width. Now this is going to be my web res version, so for this one I'm going to throw in my watermark. I'm going to use a black colour, because I think I'm going to pop it up here. Art of imagery.com, just to break it up a bit, I like to make the .com a bit lighter, so we're about halfway. Knock the opacity of this one down. That looks good. Reposition this just exactly where I want it. Now I'm going to run a quick sharpen on the background. I don't like to collapse the layers before I run the sharpen because that text layer is already nice and sharp. So those settings are good. 0.5 and 100. Now we can collapse that down and save that as a JPEG. The light's good. And there we go. End of the tutorial. This is the image we started with. And with just a, a couple of minutes and a few quick changes, we turned it into this. And finally, the web output of this. Now, as you can see, you can use some of these techniques in your own shots. and. Oh, I don't want to go into settings too much because you should always play with the settings. When you use curves or when you use sharpening or whatever, you should just look at your individual image and just play with the sliders until whatever effect you're trying to achieve looks the best. That's the best way to achieve these sorts of things. So don't get too hung up on details, just try and get in there and play. It's the best way to learn Photoshop. If you have any questions, please do ask them in the comments section and I look forward to joining, you joining me on my next tutorial. Thank you very much.